I guess we're uh, 56 inputs. Except I have some extras at front of house that I'm using. Uh, plus, I have 16 stereo effects returns and uh, a bunch of I have audience mics that are at front of house to record, um, extra talkbacks, things like that. I probably have about, I don't know, 75 inputs or something at fr up front. And then I keep some extras just in case. If there's, a, uh, if there's a support act and they're also playing through the PA and the PA doesn't have uh, a switching system, I keep extra inputs on my desk so that they can feed AES into my console and that goes out to the PA, uh, things like that. Uh, so it's not a crazy number of inputs. It's about you know, 70 inputs or so. So the 112 engine works fine for me. I don't really need more than that. Plugins, I am using almost 60 plugins. Which, which really sounds like a lot, but if you look at the channels, you actually don't see that many. So it, it seems surprising even to me to see that it's you know 60 plugins or whatever. But 20 of them are effects, uh, and it's because a send might have a long reverb, it might have a phaser, it might have three, three or four different things on it, and in different songs they're on. So in one song it might be just this verb, in another one it might be a verb plus a phaser, in another one it might be just a chorus or something like that. So there are a lot sitting there, but they're not all being used. And then also, Jesse's vocal has got, uh, I think, four plugins on it. But there's a duplicate of that as well, because there's a spare mic that has four of those same. And there's a guest mic that has four of those same. Neither of those do we use most of the time, but they have to be there just in case. So I am absolutely maxing out one DSP card. Um, and I actually only have one DSP card in my system. Uh, I sent it to the team in Berkeley, and they loaded up the same show file, and it took up one whole card plus six extra chips on the next card, and they were asking me, "How do you make this fit on one?" I was like, this is, you know, it auto shuffles to take up the least space it needs to, but if it has more space, it'll use it. So, but uh, so yeah, I have a lot of plugins, not a crazy number of inputs, and in terms of what's happening on stage, it's only. Uh, bass, guitar, keys, uh, drums, so uh, well, and vocal. So, in terms of physical faders that I need to be, uh, that I need to have in front of me, it's not actually a crazy number. Uh, I've got a lot of VCAs that have multiple things inside it, so I don't need a massive surface. Uh, 24 fader surface gives me all the detailed parts of the drum kit, all the various keyboards, uh, all the guitars sit inside of one VCA. Um, then I've got anything that comes from playback, and then I've got Jess's vocal, a couple of the effects returns, and then a couple of VCAs for the whole show. And then I keep my matrix outputs up on the small faders up top, so mains and sub up there. So I don't actually need the larger surface. The 24 fits very well. There are a couple shows we're doing that we were doing in very small places, and sometimes we do things like TV events. So if I have a front of house position that is you know, three meters wide by two meters deep, you, you can't bring it in. So it's nice to have the 24C. The whole footprint is only this big because I keep the main display a little bit above it. And uh, my recording computer is mounted in the doghouse of it and is always plugged in. And I have a, another little tiny display for that. So everything all together is only the same footprint as the 24C itself. At home, in my, my mixing room at home, I have tons of analog gear. Lots of it, like a lot of it. I think I have seven distressors. I've got uh, two API 2500s. I've got some dangerous music compressors. I've been collecting it for years. And people sell it very cheap now because everyone's moving to digital world and they, you, know, you can get a lot more for your money in digital. <clears throat> and since I travel so much, you end up in a random city. Someone's selling it very cheap because they need to pay rent. You know, I, I end up flying home with more gear. So I own lots of it. And I did think about bringing some for this tour. But we have to fly for a bunch of shows. So we just flew here. That means that's another piece of luggage that has to fly with us. So I just try to avoid flying with extra luggage. I was going to bring a Bracasti with me, you know, the reverb unit. It sounds absolutely stunning. But then recently, one of the guys on the test team for uh, Live Sound actually showed me there's a plugin by a company called Liquid Sonics that is endorsed by Bracasti. Bracasti says this is the one that sounds exactly like our stuff. It's 200 bucks. I put it on the Mac Mini that's in the rack. So now, so now I can send 64 channels to it and back and get 64 channels of Bracasti if I want to. But 
I don't have to bring a whole rack of stuff with me. Instead, it's just this little Mac Mini that I throw in a suitcase. Um, so I love, I love analog gear. I think it sounds amazing. I think it's impractical when you're working with an artist that goes between touring and flying. Uh, it becomes quite complicated. I probably use it more than anybody else does. Um, and it's because I have a desk in front of me all the time, so I can sit and play with it until I find things that work. The idea is really that anything you want to customize in the desk, you can customize using events. You don't have to, but you can. Um, I like taking the things that I will forget to do and making them automated using events. Or I like to make it so that events do the things that I can't do because I don't have enough hands to do those moves at the same time. Earlier I had mentioned that uh, I had built some events where if I took the guitar fader and pushed it up, it would make EQ changes. And that is what you would do in a studio album. That's how you would make the guitar solo stand out. You would make the guitar solo stand out and you would take space out of everything else in order to do it. We can do that live using things like events. If you were going to do it in an analog desk, you'd be doing this to an EQ. You'd turn it up here, turn it down there. But at the same time, you'd be wanting to do this. You'd need four hands. Um, you know, digital desks should be capable of doing the things that we can't do with you know, our hands. So in the case of that event, uh, it's a couple events together. One of them is uh, guitar fader between 0 dB and 1 dB. The next one's guitar fader between 1 dB and 2. The next one's between 2 and 3. And in each of those three steps, all the event does is it says, take guitar low mid-range, turn it up by 1 dB. Uh, go to the next one, take guitar mid-range, turn it up by 2. Uh, go to the next one, turn it up by 3. And then when you go back down to 0, it brings it back down to where it was. The stuff I use all the time, uh, events, of course. VCA spill, I use it all the time. For example, on my, my custom layout for this show, I don't put all the toms there. I have one VCA that is all the toms. And if I need to do something, just double tap, change the level, tap it again, and you come back to it. Because I don't want to use up four more faders when, when I only really want 24 in front of me. So I use VCA spill a lot. I do use attention on fader a lot, too. That's a newer feature. And I use it a lot for kind of funny reasons. I'll use it a lot if the show is about to start and I need to have the iPod on a fader, but I want my show layout up in front of me. So I'll you know, select the iPod, attention on fader, and I have one finger on that, and I've got one finger on my band VCA, and I can just go like that. But more, more than that, I actually use it because Jess invites guests on stage a lot. At least once a show, she invites someone to come on and, and sing with her. And we've got Jess's vocal, we've got a spare, we've got a guest mic, and we've got a guest spare. And it's not always the guest mic that gets given to that person. So I'm, not, I'm never sure which microphone they're going to get. It should be the guest all the time, but it's not always. So I just watch on the universe, and I see which one gets a little bit of level, and I touch that one, and I go, I right, got it. And that way, I can access the channel real quickly, but also the EQ and all that stuff all shows up immediately. So I don't have to try and find it somewhere else. I don't have to you know, flip through layers to find channels.